y'all. Today we are going to review the Inspire Faith Bible. But before I get into this, we're going to discuss the Word of God. So let's scoop back here for a second. And this is Revelation. And I just want to point out a couple things to you here. And uh, Revelations 1 to 3 is God's warning to his people. Like, hey, get yourself together. I'm coming back. And then, and here's a scripture I'll point out to you to highlight. You can study. You can review. You can do all your studying from this today if you would like. And it is where the rapture is in Revelation 4. Then I looked. Oh, excuse me. This is in the, I believe it is a new uh, NLT. It is, then as I looked, I saw a door standing open in heaven. And the same voice I heard before spoke to me like a trumpet blast. The voice said, come up here and I will show you what must happen after this. This is the rapture right here. Okay, um, you'll have to do your studies. Now, let me share a little funny story. I grew up in a Christian home. And, of course, you know, we talk about the tribulation period and stuff in our home. And as a small child, I was horrified. I was scared of it. And so even in, into my, uh, I'd say my early adult years, you know, 18, 19 and all that, I was terrified of that time period until da, 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 I read a book. What the World is Coming to by Chuck Smith. Now you can get that for free on Kindle. And you can get a free Kindle on Amazon. All you do is type in free Kindle on Amazon and you can download it and you can have a free Kindle and you could read that book as well as many other books by Chuck Smith and other authors. You can just look for, you know, free books. But that book explained a lot of things. Now, granted, that book is very old, but it got me through to understand and I was never afraid after that. Now, there's a couple things I want to share with you about Bible prophecy. Because, you know, we are living in the end days. Believe it or not, no other time in history could Christ have returned. Except for right now. Um, let me tell you and show you some things that may be of interest to you. 20% of your Bible is about Bible prophecy. And... Skip Isaac, I hope I'm saying his name right, from Calvary Chapel. He says, if you're not good at Bible prophecy, get good at it. Now, that was an inspiration for me. Now, the devil also hates Genesis and Revelation because it shows, you know, especially Revelation, I should say, because it shows his downfall. So he doesn't want people reading the book of Revelation. Trust you this and Genesis he doesn't like it because it's Genesis 315 you know as soon as he started his shenanigans basically the Lord put him in his place you know it's like hey you're coming down buddy so Genesis 315 you can check that out so you want to get good at Bible prophecy so why do I say it couldn't have happened any other time in history besides now number one Israel had to become a nation um it talks about this, I believe, in uh, Ezekiel 36, 37, you know, right around in there. They had to become a nation. We had to see the world turning over over to the other side of the world, which we're seeing, like, the downfall of America here, um, which is another thing, which is, you know, a little prophecy, but I mean, I'm sure there's other things in history. But, you know, no other time in history could there be a time that every man could see, like the Antichrist and all this stuff. I mean, with the Internet and with AI, which some people have acted like that's going to be, like, how we all felt about the Internet that grew up, that never saw the Internet before. The AI is going to be, like, another huge thing like that. So, with all these things, the pestilences and all these things getting faster and faster, the Bible prophecies being fulfilled every day. We look at the news, we see more and more things being fulfilled. No other time. Yes, people have said the Lord's coming back for years, but back then, did they have, was Israel a nation? Well, that did happen in 1948. So, uh, 
maybe after that time some people could say that but what about uh, every eye could see and what about the technology for the mark of the beast what about the way that the culture is right now with people just not really wanting anything to do with god and kind of you know turning away from him and really just you know even years ago i mean even if people didn't love jesus at least they had respect for the things of god you know we don't see that anymore i mean we see the more we study the more we see that never before in history except for right now could the lord come back and so you know and there's a lot of interesting things about this like example matthew 24 that was not written to the christians that was written to the jewish people and it said the nation or the people that saw israel become a nation you have to kind of look and study all this stuff out because it's going to take you a little bit but because like israel's the fig tree and all that they can't die off so to speak until they see all these things come to have come to pass and that includes a second coming the second coming so you gotta add like seven years on to that so you know so people that are going to be raptured you know we get raptured seven years ahead of that so all that said is this is a lot to take in but you got to do your bible studies on this listen to chuck smith listen to which he's passed away now jack hibbs i mean there's a you know um let's see i can't think what his name is He's on with Jack Hibbs a lot, the man from Israel. I can't say his name right, but there's a lot of Bible studies. Get into Bible prophecy. I think there's Prophecy Watchers, there's a bunch of things. There's um, Lee Bernard. Start studying Bible prophecy. Be in the know. Jesus could come back any moment in the rapture. This is one of the reasons why I am making Bibles so that I can have my Bibles giving information to people that are left behind that missed the rapture and hopefully some of them bibles will be found before the rapture and people will get saved so that when they get you know so that if they're left behind they will have a silent witness because all the christians are going to be gone and so they'll have the 144,000 israelites that get saved that are going to be proclaiming the gospel they'll be preaching to them but they'll also be bibles that we leave behind but and there'll be an angel in heaven going through the air telling people hey you know talking about jesus and stuff so there will be people getting saved in the tribulation period but if you are like me and you want to do something you can become a tribulation missionary take the bibles you have write a letter in it let them know what's happening you're like hey jesus is coming back soon tell them that the christians left from the rap, you know, they went in the rapture. They weren't taken by aliens or some kind of thing that the world has to explain it away. But they were taken in the rapture and then tell them about the mark of the beast so that they don't get that. Which is that 666 number, which no other time in history did they have that technology where everybody could get a mark. And the pestilences and all this, all this stuff's going to be like birth pains. It's going to get faster and faster and faster. There'll be one right on top of another. So, don't be afraid. Get that book. And that'll help you. And then start listening to guys like Jack Hibbs and different ministers, prophecy watchers. And start studying Bible prophecy so that you know, you don't have to be afraid. You're going to heaven. But of course, we don't want one person. We are taking everybody with us that can get saved. Hopefully they all get saved before the rapture. But if they, for some reason, they miss out and have to go through that horrible time. I mean, no use saving food and all that kind of stuff. Because you won't have any food. The trees will be burnt up and all this other stuff. I mean, things are going to be crazy. I mean, that's all just, just silly stuff. So, start to study Bible prophecy today. Because no other time in history could the Lord come back except for now okay now that's one thing now why do i love this bible okay and i'll show you what i'm doing with it first of all it's just beautiful it's really pretty it's got some nice coloring pages i wasn't going to color in them but i am starting to color in them i wrote myself a note like work slowly on each picture i you know i could just like add color i don't have to color like a one all at once it's just the way i work like i might be working with a green pen and i might color green and a bunch of stuff you know it's just the way i worked believe me i had one of these <laughs> before it got like so huge it was like i broke the binding it got huger and huger and now it's like i make all my bibles it's like, 
my journaling Bibles, my study Bibles, my prayer Bibles, and all that. You can just take a glue stick, put a piece of paper in, have an extra page. And so, and have lots of Bibles, because uh, there was talk even with some of the online Bibles with AI and stuff aren't right anymore. You want to have physical Bibles. I don't know if, I don't know if that's all true or not. You have to check up on that information, because there's all kinds of information. Some's true, some's not. You got to do your own research. There's a lot of voices, and you got to stick to the Word of God. Let me tell you that. You better stick to the Word of God. You better know it for yourself, and you better have physical Bibles. And, uh, hey, if you're not going to church right now, maybe for whatever reason, some people didn't go back to church after COVID. I'm not judging. I'm not telling people what they got to do, what they don't got to do. But, you know, maybe you can even buy, you know, some Bibles and put them in your home for the tribulation period and use some of your tithe money for that. I don't know. You got to pray about that stuff. That's between you and God. I don't want to tell you what to do. Um, okay, because, well, not because I don't know what to tell you to do. I mean, that's something you got to pray about, that stuff. You know, so I'm just sharing that with you because you can send me Bibles, too, if you have Bibles that you have worked on, old, new, whatever. And you can email me here if you want to send me Bibles, and then I'll work on them and get them out. But if uh, you um, want to do this, too, a lot of people are becoming tribulation missionaries right now. So here, look how pretty beautiful. Isn't this pretty? Look at these nice pretty pages. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. So one of the reasons I like this Bible is, um, all right, here's a good example. I was studying uh, 2 Kings 6, and let's see if we can get there. It's back here, guys. And um, I'm also using, I mean, like all my Bibles are like my everything Bible, prayer Bible, the whole thing, like I said. Um, put tabs on them, the pray, prayer request, sticky notes for praying for people but I can also scripture write and even study the word from it so like I write each verse out and then um write what it means to me but in the KJV which is my all-time favorite it talks it says here in 2 Kings 6 1 and the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha behold now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us well to me that sounded like it was straight <laughs> well you can use a version like this NLT and it can be like commentary because it says there wasn't basically there wasn't enough space you know they where they were getting together it was too small and if I only had the King James version I wouldn't know that so I read all my versions you know I KJV is like my go-to but if I don't understand something I could use the other ones like a commentary I pretty much use my KJV for all my studies as far as deep diving. But if I don't understand something, hey, why not pick up another version, right? And uh, so I can do scripture writing in these, which is what really what I want to. I can draw too. I can draw scriptures on the side. You know, there was all kinds of ideas I had for these. But I know how I am. In the end of the day, they're going to be my everything Bible. No matter what I say to myself, no matter what I plan, that's always what they end up. They're everything, so they'll be my pictures, they'll be my drawing. If I have a regular Bible, I'll put paper in it and draw a picture, you know. Some of my Bibles are so thick, you can't do that, but, you know, the goal is to get through as much of the Word as I can, or I get to a Bible, and it's just like, maybe for some reason, I, I just passed it on for some reason, whatever reason. But um, you always want to have lots and lots of Bibles on hand, always, and you want it printed Bibles, okay? So a lot of people right now are buying a lot of printed Bibles, and you want to do that. And you want to know that Bible, like the back of your hand, you know, because there's a lot of voices. I've seen people that were really solid and good go go off the wall, away from the Word. And, you know, you don't want that to happen. You want to know the Word for yourself because you have to know the Word like the back of your hand. I mean, hey, this is your life. Turn off that. You know, you can be on social media and all that, but, I mean, I carry my Bible with me. If I'm going to carry my cell phone, I'm going to carry my Bible. And if I get a teeny tiny Bible I can't use, I always tell you guys this. Get a pair of these glasses at the dollar store. If you need bigger size, like a 350, you can get them from Walmart. Amazon has them, but they're really hard to find to ship in the U.S., which is where I am. So you have to... Um, I went to Walmart, and they had them, like, galore. So I bought a bunch there, but I also bought ones like this at the dollar store. So 
but depending on how much you can see because you know hey i want to read my bibles right you know i don't want to just color and stuff i mean i want that word over and over and in and out and <laughs> know it like the back of my hand open the book shut the book i mean you want to know your bible i mean come on guys we're going to heaven right you know we're all going to be up in heaven and uh we're gonna you know want to have fun and talk about the scriptures and all that stuff now chuck misler i don't know if you ever heard him he's pretty good too he's good to listen to about end times and hail Lindsay. oh my goodness he's awesome um but Chuck Misler said that he thought possibly the Bible could be the book of life. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, you know, it's just an interesting thought, you know. But Jesus is the word of God. So, so anyway, here we go. So isn't this nice? Isn't it pretty? And in the very back, it has, da, 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 which I was really pleased to find this out. Because these are great to add to your prayer Bibles if you're looking for topics. So you could put in like, um, or like maybe you're dealing with something. Joyce Meyer said, if you're going through a trouble, um, study that area. Like, don't be studying uh, how to, you know, I don't know. I don't, like, maybe don't be studying something that doesn't apply. But like, if you're going through a hard time, like maybe you're having trouble cleaning the house. Well, maybe you want to study self-control or you want to study diligence you know those are the scriptures you want to go through so yes your prayer bible you can put things in that like self-esteem maybe you're struggling with who you are in christ you know you can put those scriptures in there or maybe you're going through some purity issues which i heard someone say something really awesome about this like say you're having trouble getting stop eating or smoking or whatever else you're doing you know Start quoting those scriptures, even while you're doing the things you're doing, you know. God is there. He knows you're doing it. So just start, ask, say, hey, God, help me through this. Help me through this. I mean, after a while, you know, God breaks every chain. He is good to us, and he takes care of all those things that we go through. He is bigger and stronger than everything. So I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope that, uh, I'll say it this way, I pray for Bibles. <laughs> I mean, I... I have, you know, I just ask God to send me Bibles and, and, you know, I hope that you do the same. If you see this Bible and maybe it's not in your budget or maybe it is in your budget, but something else is more important. I don't know. I'm not saying you should, you know, put things on credit or get yourself in trouble, but pray for it. Say, Lord, I love that Inspire Faith Bible. Please make an opportunity for me to get one. So that's what I would say. I pray for Bibles right now. Actually pray for me. I'm praying for as the Lord to send me some Bibles in and, uh, God provides for me. I mean, you can send me a Bible if you want, but I, God is the one that brings to me the things that I need. So, and he provides, believe me, more than enough. So, but I want to just say that to you, that if you want Bibles, start to ask the Lord. I will tell you, he has all kinds of ways that things can come your way and that you need for what you need. Now, a couple places that I know you can get free Bibles which is, um, let's see, go to the rescue mission. They give away free Bibles, like if you're there and they see them, and the Salvation Army. Now, there might be other places too, but if you want to, like, make Bibles and stuff, like, for the people that are left behind, or even if you just want some to read, you know. And sometimes if you write to ministries, I wrote to Joseph Prince, and I asked him for a Bible, and he sent me a Bible. So I asked him for things to help me in my spiritual growth, and I think I asked him for a Bible, and he sent me one. And I thought that was very sweet and very nice, and Kenneth Copeland did too. So just so you know, Kenneth Copeland and Joseph Prince both sent me a Bible. And of course, you can read Bibles for free on Bible Hub. Uh, which I love Bible Hub, um, Blue Bible, which you can also get a free Bible commentary if you go to EnduringWord.com with David Guzik, who is awesome. So there you go. That's today's video. You can get your pen and paper out, um, rewatch the video in slow, write down all the things that you needed here so you can take advantage of the freebie things that I try to help you guys so you guys can be blessed. And uh, Lord, let me, let me pray for you. Pray for everyone. Father God, in the name of Jesus, if anyone's hearing this that does not know you, I ask right now in the name of Jesus that they would see their need for you. And if you would like to pray to accept Christ, let's do it now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, just repeat this prayer after me. I know I'm a sinner and I need you. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to live for you every day of my life and to continue in your word and to teach and to talk and to help others grow in you. And Lord, I also 
pray for those that are listening to me, and I pray that they would um, teach and help others, disciple others, and grow in you, and uh, help them to get the things that they need to build up their faith. Every single person here, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, I just want to share this too. You might get saved today, but you know that early church, they weren't that old and they were winning all kinds of people for the Lord. They didn't wait 30 years till they were in seminary and all that stuff. They started right away. So if you know more than you knew yesterday, say you got saved, you could just simply tell somebody, hey, go watch that lady's video. You might need to get saved too. Or you might um, tell them how you got saved. It doesn't mean you got to teach them and go through all the stuff. You know, not a teacher like the Bible calls a teacher, but you know, you can at least bring others to Christ. A lot of times you'll see like the woman in the Bible that I think at the well of water, she got saved and she immediately started telling everybody. I mean, the church needs to be moving a little faster. You know, people are waiting until they go to seminary and all this stuff. Hey man, we just don't have that kind of time anymore. Jesus is coming. So you just go out and start telling everybody about Jesus. Okay guys, so with that, remember, big or small, you too can be a backyard farm. God bless.